We are not a building. We are not a social club. We are a body, unconditionally loved by Jesus. We are sustained by prayer and the word and built up by one another. We can meet anywhere, take any shape, we are a signpost for the kingdom as a witness of Jesus, our King. We are the church. Hey, my good day. It's good to be with you um, for a conversation around race and the killing of George Floyd, as well as what it means to be the people of God in this moment. Before we start that though, I do wanna mention Covenant Community, which is next week, next Sunday at 4 p.m. We're gonna do a live webinar where you'll be able to hear from people on the leadership team, from Mike and myself. Uh, you'll hear about vision. We'll talk a little bit about what it could look like to gather again. We don't know when, but we are working on how as well as what, what does God have for us over the next year, over the next two years. And so we're, we're excited. We believe that God has given us assignment to go forward, not backwards. And we hope that you'll join us. Uh, Covenant community, you will get an email about that, but you can look online at idcpdx.com and find the details there as well. So it has been a really hard week. Uh, or, or more than a week now. Yeah. And it's really important, I think, that as a faith community, as a family, that we have this conversation because we are no longer uh, a monolithic church. We are a diverse church and not as diverse as we should be, but we're diverse. And, and so first off, I thought it would be good just to hear how you guys, how we're doing, how we're processing this. I know Mike... You texted me at two in the morning, and um, this is a heavy moment, clearly, for all of us. But we also process that differently. And yeah. so maybe we could start just by sharing, like, where are we at? Yeah. What's well, uh, <laughs> I've been I've been kind of holding two things. I've been holding a lot of heartbreak and a lot of hope at the same time. And that seems odd. I was, I was telling somebody recently that I think my mom passing in December kind of helped me because that was the first time I really learned that you could actually hold two things that seem totally unrelated mm -hmm. at the same time. Then it was grief and gratitude. Now, it's a lot of heartbreak. Um, it's not the first time I have felt this heartbreak or sensed it or talked to anybody about it. Um, it just, it's, it's a heartbreak that keeps repeating itself. And yet at the same time, there's, there's hope. Mm. And the hope that I, that I feel and the hope that I'm, I'm experiencing is because it feels different. It feels like I'm having different kinds of conversations. It feels like different people are standing up and talking. It feels like m different sets of people are outraged and upset and angry and hurt. And I don't feel so isolated in my pain as I walk mm -hmm. through this. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we go through we go through things like this, you know, and 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 you can, you know, you can tell me whether or not this is accurate for you, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of times we go through things like this alone and by ourselves, or you'll hear somebody say, I'm so sorry about what's happening to you, mm -hmm. what's happening over there. And it's almost as though you don't mean to other a person, but yeah. you you unintentionally do that. This mm -hmm. time feels different, yeah. and I'm hoping that that when we come through this, yeah. that we will be new in mm -hmm. the way we respond moving forward. Yeah, yo, that's I identify with all of that. Um, yeah, um, it, it's interesting. As even as I like speak as a like big black man, um, I know some people are like, why does he say like why does I've just learned recently that white people um, don't sometimes know that they're white. Like they're never, like they don't discover that till later. And I feel like I've been black my whole life, like told I was black my whole life. So that's interesting. But as a big black man, 
um, and as a citizen of the kingdom of God, like a disciple of Jesus, um, I just feel so torn and feel like there are, um, like I'm two people living in one person and um, yeah, it, it ebbs and it flows the, the thoughts and the emotions and the feelings. But I think I, I love the way you put it there. There is heartbreak and like fear and pain and sadness at the realities of this type of um, like, yeah, just murder and oppression and systemic, like at a systemic level. And um, like that sucks. That was that 2 a.m. text. Like I need a I need a day like I need a personal like mental day, like I'm just not gonna, and even that, like you, you, you say a day, and then you wake up the next day, and it's like, hey, it's the same, you know, like, yeah. but who said a day was it, or was gonna fix it, and not that you're looking for the fix, but just some relief somewhere, um, but then you, I don't know, the way my mind works, I can't exclude the evidence that I know, and five years ago when Eastside started, there were, I could find no cops when it came to these different officer shootings that would even say this is wrong. I could find um, no white evangelical churches um, that I knew that would openly say like Black Lives Matter or this this is wrong. And five years later now, 2020, I'm seeing prominent leaders, um, officers who are saying they're being threatened, their jobs are being threatened, because they are speaking up and speaking out. Um, and so there's there's a hope there that, um, again, I'm not rushing to. Um, I'm, I'm fine and, and have found that uh, Jesus allows me to, to feel what I feel and to experience all of those painful emotions and whatnot. But again, my mind, it, it just keeps going. And um, thanks be to God, like I do, I do see things that make me hopeful. And yeah, so heartbreak and hope, I think those are perfect ways to put it. So, so I would be curious to know how you're experiencing it. Like how are, mm -hmm. how are you walking through this and, and what's going on in, in you? Yeah. I, I mean, it's a lot, I would say. I mean, when, obviously when you text me and stories unraveling, I think, I think the first feeling is shame, like shame that we're here again, shame that, um, it, it's happening to black people again. Um, and it's 2020 and this story is not changing. Um, the system that privileges me is still, you know, oppressing others, people I love. Um, so there's that feeling. Um, last Sunday when we were all, we all gathered at a gathering for pastors and leaders and hearing Kali Ladd, you know, she's part of Imago, um, speak, the president of Kairos PDX. Um, Killed that. I mean, yeah, it was like a TED Talk. It was amazing. Oh, but hearing her express her her outrage and her anger as well as her hope. Um, I mean, she got into the neuroplasticity <laughs> and <laughs> like we can literally change the brains of these Ooh. children so that that, that idea... Good of racism that created this story that, you know, and so, yeah, you feel that hope in her and Eric and Hala mentors and kids. But at the same time, I think there's that sense of like grief, you know, and, mm -hmm. and outrage and, and shame. And we're also, you know, we're we are a diverse community like we're not as diverse as we want to be but we're diverse and so there is a like a, a common grief but it's experienced radically differently mm -hmm. you know how i'm experiencing it versus how you're experiencing it mm -hmm. and i you know mike you were talking about the kingdom you know as a person of the kingdom and i think one of the challenges is that the american story and the gospel for a lot of white churches, those become kind of one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and in the kingdom, what happens is that that allegiance changes. Like, yes, it's a great country and we're free and all that, but it's not great for everybody. Mm. And the kingdom kind of allows us to maybe see, like not to maybe see, to see that that 
that difference, right? Yeah. And and so I'm wondering, like, speak to that a little bit because I feel like in the in the wedded story of Jesus in America and the gospel all being one, it doesn't allow for the truth about slavery mm -hmm. and you know injustice and inequity and you know genocide of uh native americans and first people like what how how do we come away from that hybrid narrative and find this allegiance in the kingdom right where where all like the the least are first and the you know mm -hmm. the greatest and the least are, it's all reversed yeah i think we have to we we have to be conscious that the story is ours to tell. The gospel is ours to tell. It's not America's to tell. It's not politics to tell. It's not the newspapers to tell. But that the gospel speaks to every side imaginable, but it refuses to be owned by any one side. And I think that we have to remember that as the peace, as the people of God. We, we don't you know, Jesus was not a Republican or a Democrat. Jesus was not, you know, that person who, who was going to be on this side of this issue and that side of that issue. And we've allowed the culture to hijack the gospel in so many different ways. And I think we just have to tell it like it is, tell the truth the way the truth is, because we, we can't ignore justice if we live as kingdom people. We can't ignore oppression if we live as kingdom people. We can't ignore each other's individual pain mm -hmm. if we live as kingdom people. If we want the kingdom to come, the kingdom comes with justice and the kingdom comes with kindness and the kingdom comes with forgiveness. The kingdom comes with all of these things that one side wants you to ignore half of and the other side wants you to ignore the other half of. And that's just not how yeah. we live. And I'm, I mean, right now, particularly, it's like you feel like you got to pick a side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Whether it's on what you do on social media or, or anything else, like you got to pick a side. And how do we navigate that if the side that we're trying to pick is Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, there there isn't one way, but it looks different. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. I. I think there there is not a side that we choose. We, as the people of God, extrapolate up and recognize that we represent the kingdom of God, which means we're not going to be fully on either side because the kingdom of God is not on either side. And so I think for us, it is truly um, stepping into the calling of of that, of who we are as kingdom citizens and recognize that 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 prayer of Jesus, that thy kingdom come, thy will be done, again, as it was a prayer, um, even in that moment against the Roman Empire, right? It, it is a prayer against this American um, society in this American country, in this American system. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The kingdom of God is the only answer even to all of this, all of the pain and all of the destruction and all of the oppression and all of the racism and all of the isms and schisms is Jesus Christ and his coming and establishing his kingdom. Um, so I think that we, we stop looking for the side that we can rest in. We're going to be uncomfortable people yeah. because we are exiles. And so, you know what I'm saying? So, so we should yeah. stop looking for the comfy seat um, or, or looking for like, yeah, the, the, or trying to put Jesus in our camps and recognize like he, he created a new camp yeah. to make us a, a new people, mm -hmm. his people um, and his kingdom people. And so I think that there's an opportunity then for us to say, yo, I remember when I would march downtown um, during protests, even, you know, three, five years ago, um, it was five years ago and four years ago and three years ago. Um, right. But there would be like, there would be this, this temptation, like as I'm down there with all my, my people, right. And, and, and I'm there in my blackness fighting for black life and, and black rights and all of that. Um, it, but there gets a point to where, you know, they, the chance turned to, you know, all cops are pigs or yeah. all cops must die. or all, And it's like, yo, I got to step out. Like there is a, kingdom 
reality. There are value. There's a value system of the kingdom. There's a currency of the kingdom. There, there are the ways and the filtering of the kingdom that is paramount and first for me that even my blackness is in submission to. And that's what I'm calling for. Even like if you're an officer, be an officer. I'm not against cops, but, but, but if you are a believer in Christ, then that being an officer is subject under the authority of the kingdom of God. And if you're a white evangelical, be a white evangelical. But when white evangelicals say this, we go this way, and the kingdom of God says we go that way, you have to, you know what I'm saying? So that, so I believe that if we stop looking for which camp we're going to fit in and so nicely and neatly here on this earth in this American society, we step up as people of the kingdom and say, like, we recognize that we won't fit in. Um, but we fit in here and we can fit in here together. And when the world sees these ones from the East and from the West, from the left and from the right, from the Democrat and the Republican and the Black Lives Matter and the uh, uh, officers coming together um, because we all believe in the Imago Day, in the humanity of, yeah. of people and in seeking justice and righteousness in, in the in the good, you know what I'm saying? And um, of all people. I think I believe that's where we need to go as as believers. And you're bound to pick, you know, you're bound to tick somebody off, you know, in every single well, yeah. side. Yeah. Be and okay it, with that. And right. I think part of that though is none of us wanna all of us feel like we're yeah, amen, we're cause I'm already there. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> like <laughs> when the angel of the Lord's in front of Joshua and Joshua's like, Whose side are you on? Are you for us or against us? And the angel of the Lord says, Neither. You know, <laughs> and the, the reason is, is because we're all coming. We all have somewhere closer to Jesus to get to. Yes, sir. But I think for like for white evangelicals, the mm-hmm. the the American narrative and G, like Jesus is kind of woven into the fabric yeah. of that. And in order, you know, when, when Paul and the early Christians were killed, they weren't killed because they believed in Jesus. They were killed because they were saying Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. Yeah. And there's something about the declaration of the yeah. kingdom of God that, that has some political ramifications that are not Democrat yeah. or Republican, liberal or conservative. They are a declaration of the kingdom's reign, yeah, right? Which yeah. is a different economy. It's the, a different humanity. Yeah. It's a new creation. But part of that means that, that, that the alternative stories are stories of empire. Mm-hmm. And their empires have to wage war with each other, yeah. right? So yeah. there has to be somebody up here and somebody down here or vice versa. Mm. And the kingdom comes and says, actually... No, I'm going to make one new humanity out of all these people. Part of that means, as a white man, that I have to recognize the history that I've been taught Mm -hmm. and lived into really excluded a lot of the story. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And I'm aware of how uncomfortable some people get when they hear you know, a black person or, you know, Kaepernick taking a knee or something yes. like that, because they're like, oh, that's, that's defaming, you know, all, all the wars that have been fought and the here, you know, the yeah. heroic people that have fought, but, but, but I, but that's not what's being said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And so what's being said is that you can live in a country, but not be happy about what's happening in that country yeah. and you can still love a country and not so speak to that a little bit because that's a narrative that you you're not having to unravel it like i think white people are but you're experiencing the effects of it or have been yeah i think there's a there's a um there's a song that i love it's by priscilla renee you're so, you're always the poet and the singer. I, I love I love it. And she she has this she has this lyric and she just says, "Little Jimmy went outside, you know, got a toy, went outside to play. How was he supposed to know that he would die that day?" Mm. Officer told the judge Jimmy had a gun, and now another mother is burying her son. Mm. And then she says, "If you don't believe that's true, I guess I wrote this song for you. Do you think I say these things because I hate America? No." 
that's just life for me, living while black in the land of the free. That, that song gives me chills every time I hear it because what, what it does is it, it says, what we need to do is to actually understand and listen to other people's experiences. And simply because it is not your experience, you say it doesn't exist. It doesn't, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It couldn't, well, that could not be. A police yeah. officer has never treated me that way. Yeah. So police officers are inherently good because yeah. it's just not my experience. And I think that part of what it means to be in the kingdom is to say, you know what? We don't all have the same experience. Yeah. So let me go outside of my experience and find out what's going on with you and yeah. what's going on with you and what, mm -hmm. what it means. Mike's interaction with a police officer would be very different from mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I might just, you know, I might just decide to snap off in a minute. My, Mike doesn't have that luxury, you know, to do uh, that. Uh, and uh, we're both black. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's all about coming out of myself, I think, that matters a lot. Mm. Yeah, I, f I feel the uh, the tension where, um, I'm trying to think of what Rick had said about What did you end your question asking? Oh, just that sense that I think in the hybrid of an American Jesus, right, that we aren't really, you have to ignore a lot of things that have happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and while I think for white evangelicals, if you grew up in that, that's part of the unraveling that has to take place as you come closer to the kingdom. But yeah. you experience... Mm -hmm. You experience sort of the fallout or the mm -hmm. pushback of that. Yeah, sorry, there's so much going on in my head. Um, yeah, there's this idea that like if we don't like it here, we should just go back home, and that we can't live in this place cr and criticize it and love it. Um, and and I push against that often because uh, our w wanting to tell the truth about this place is because of our love for this place and. I, it, it's it, I, it's interesting because I believe white evangelicals, the there has been this marriage between Christianity and America. So to them, I've found in some instances that defending America is defending the Bible, is defending Jesus. Like it's it's deep, um, and and so as kingdom people, I believe there has to be this divorce. Yeah. Of of that that any system made by man is of the kingdom of God because it just cannot be. And so now a part of that is I, I believe telling the truth, which which growing up in my house, I remember that like again, I, I grew up I grew up with a father that was heavy handed and pretty strict. I saw domestic violence occur in my home. So I remember pretty tense and intense times, yet I never wanted to move and live anywhere else. I knew friends that had better living situations. I never wanted to live there. Uh, my dad is still my hero. He died when I was 16 years old, but like still everything, you know, he was a musician, I'm a musician. He was a baker, I'm a baker. Like there's still, so I know that tension of I live here and I love it here and sometimes I hate it here. And I'll tell you what I hate about it, so hopefully you'll change it, because I want to love the whole thing, but I don't, I'm not going to lie about, you know what I'm saying? And so what I find often is that there there are these, there are, um, white America has founded this country on Christian values, and pe and people will say that, and then when you say, well, how was the, the country funded, or, fa sorry, founded, are you talking about? The genocide of the Native Americans, or you talking about the enslavement of the black of the of the Africans? Like which one of those are the Christian values that founded the country? You know, it's, it's like so. So let's just tell the truth about what the history has been. But if I'm not American first, and I am of the kingdom of God, then we can just have the conversation about yeah. what is true. Like what you know, what I'm saying what is history, and though well, my history book, I was taught okay, true, right, but. History then is often only being told by 
the the one who benefited the most of it and who got to write the history. But isn't there another side to the history? Like, ain't that what you, you know, told, you know, when they told you that your son beat up that kid? Like, didn't you say, hey, I want to hear my son's side of the story? Like, there's always another side. So I, I believe in the kingdom. Now, in, in, the, in America, I don't know that there's much room or grace um, or desire or patience to have that conversation and to, and to hear. But that's what I'm saying. Like, the values and the beauty of what we as kingdom people um, and that those relationships should look like, there has to be this humility and this realizing that, yo, like to hear um, an alter, alter, an alternative narrative doesn't cost me anything. It doesn't yeah. threaten anything. No truth threatens Christ. It's 1 Corinthians 13. Love rejoices in the truth. Come on. Rejoices in the truth. It doesn't have to hide it, doesn't have to yeah. fudge it, doesn't yeah. have to pretend it doesn't exist. It rejoices in the truth. So yeah. if if the enslavement of, of Africans mm -hmm. or the, the genocide of Native American people is a part of what built this country, we're kingdom people. Yeah. We need to be able to say that. Let's just say that. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things to where you could move on in the conversation if you could just... Admit, you ever, yeah, just, I know what me and Davia sometimes. Your, grand, your, your grandparents said, just tell the truth, Shane. Just tell, right. <laughs> just tell, me and Davia just sometimes, it's been like the longest arguments be like, <laughs> can we just agree on what happened? Not the how I felt, how you felt. Not that, babe, I love you. Um, I just, just the, put our business all out. Can we you. just agree on, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's just tell the truth. I know you were right, Davia. I know. Yeah, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Yeah. But that, I mean, I think that's, that is the big part for all of us is that Christ is going to call us closer to himself. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, we're going to have to be transformed. Now, this kingdom, this people of God thing is happening in a context. And that yeah. context is this moment right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm hearing uh, over and over, like, what can we do? Like, the recognition, like, the outrage, this is wrong. Yeah. What can we do? And I think, at least for me, or a lot of, maybe it's white people, maybe it's men, I don't know, we want to fix it. Like, mm -hmm. let's fix it. Um, and that's not, that almost never goes well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that because we spend so much time trying to fix the world, that's that's why it's so messed up the way it is and i think <laughs> i think that if we if we sit in it if we can sit in this pain you know it's a, the the tendency of humans is to want relief from pain mm -hmm. and god wants us to have release or freedom in that pain for as long as it yeah. needs to do its work mm. and to do its transforming work in Come us on. so i think i think in um Latasha, what's her, what's her Morrison. name? Morrison. Latasha Morrison's book. She talks about the importance of, of listening and lamenting and leveraging. And if I would love for us to actually kind of talk about what that looks like mm -hmm. for kingdom people. So what, what does listening look like? for us as kingdom people. What is it? I mean, listening is an act of love. We have a God who inclines his ear. Mm -hmm. Now he knows everything. Mm -hmm. Why would he possibly need to do this? Mm -hmm. Because he wants us to know that he is listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And listening matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think part of listening, um, you know, if you want to go fix something because you don't I don't like this pain. I don't like this. Listening seems like pointless, but in reality, the only change that ever comes is because somebody listened to another person, mm -hmm. right? Listen to the truth. And well, if you know you, when you don't listen, when you're trying to fix, you can only work on what you already know. And if you've already admitted that you don't know, then you need to listen because you can't, Mm -hmm. You can't learn anything if you don't listen. Yeah. You can only operate on what you already know. And if you own and admit, I don't know what to do, then sit your butt down and listen so that you can change and, and, and become different. Well, and one of the challenges right now is that there, there's so much noise. So who do I listen to? 
right? What are the voices that I need to listen to and how do I need to listen? Because I feel like it's just noise, noise, noise. But the truth is there are, there, I mean, I think there's two things. One is I need to go find somebody and tell, make them tell me their story or something like that. But, but there's voices now that we can listen to voices of people who aren't even here anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Most definitely. We have uh, some resources that have been compiled that um, even for everyone watching, believer, non-believer, um, there are a lot of people who want to... Uh, so, again, black people, we're not a monolith. And so there are some people who are tired of helping white people get on this journey and explaining the same things over and over again and telling their story. Um, and we want to give them the space to like not have to do that work. There are other people that you might know who are like, yo, I love the conversation. I love to help in that. So you just got to know who's around you. But I would say, listen to the people around you. If they are willing to share a lot of times or not a lot of times, sometimes I've seen where people go and listen to these podcasts and read these books and all of this, and they come to implement all the stuff they learned and the black people actually in their sphere are like, what are you doing? Like, I would never want you to approach me that way. I never want you to say that to me. And so I'm not saying don't do your work, like do your work, get the information. Um, the, even that just shows a level of ownness and, and responsibility. And, and that feels like love. Um, but don't neglect to like listen to those very much. And you, you might have Hispanic people, Latino people, Asian people in your sphere, black people in your sphere. And instead of asking do you want to be called African American or black? You go into Google. Like, I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? Now, Google going to tell you one thing, and I'm be like, what? what? So I'm just saying that, um, like, this community, and especially as believers, like, there, what I found is that there is so much grace in the community of God, and, and honestly, personally, in Imago Day, where there are a lot of people who are willing to share their stories, to help you know, like, yo, don't ever say that again. Even, like, I know Michelle's got something, anyway, never mind. She got some stories, but we have had experiences where because of the relationship, people have said some pretty crazy things that I, I feel like they were saved to say it to me because you should never <laughs> go and say that to any other uh, black person. But the listening, I, I think, goes into the lament and, and it's like, how do you know I'm listening well? Like, you should be listening until you get to lament. You know what I'm saying? And and I believe that that's where, like, true, humble listening, not listening so that you can jot down everything you hear and refute it, not not because you know it all. Like, that's a, there's an arrogance and a pride there, but, like, a humble listening, acknowledging that, yeah, there's there's a lot that I don't know and there's a lot that I need to learn. And you run it through that, that kingdom filter. If what mm -hmm. you hear tends to make you go further away from people, there's something something going on in what you're hearing or the mm. way you're hearing it. And mm. so listening should bring you closer in terms of understanding, and then lament brings you closer in terms of compassion. Mm. Mm. So so you, you're just progressively getting closer and closer and closer to the point where where my tears leave a stain on your sleeve, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, where my heartache is your heartache. It's not mm -hmm. enough to say, I know how you feel. Jesus said, I feel how you feel. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when you get to lament, you're saying that I feel how you feel. Yeah. I'm struck by how different listening and lament feel than the kind of the, the options in the culture right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, picking a side, picking of this, picking it up, which actually moves me yep. away um, mm. from certain groups of people where to listen, I have to come into close proximity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to lament, I actually have to have listened with so much empathy yeah. that um, that your cry is in my mouth. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and I feel one of the beautiful parts about this journey, even just for Imago, mm -hmm. has been for me personally to be in the proximity so that when you text me and say, I need a day, yeah. that I immediately felt it here, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Not here, like, what? what's wrong? Uh -huh. But like, I felt the trauma mm -hmm. of that moment, mm -hmm. you know? And 
Yes. And I think, and so one of the questions just becomes like, how do we lament well together? Mm. You know, how do we do this well? I mean, we're in COVID, it's, it's even more of a challenge, but, mm-hmm. but I think finding those ways in which, like you said, those tears end up on my sleeve, yeah. you know? I think, I think with lament, it's messy. It is a messy, messy thing, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think we have to give ourselves, we have to give room for us to just be messy, to just Mm -hmm. be, just be a puddle, you know, with one another. And in, in our cries to say some crazy things sometimes, to say, like if somebody says, I just don't understand how this could happen, what you don't want to hear is somebody saying, well, I don't know how you couldn't have seen it because there's this video all over the place. No, no. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like I, you know what I mean? It, it really should bring us closer together. Lament. The way you tell the difference between lament and complaint is that complaint will separate you from, from people and from God and from, from others. Mm-hmm. But lament brings you closer to God. And lament says, says I, I know you're there. This hurts. But I know you're there and I know you hear me and I know you know this is hard and lament should bring us closer to God and closer to one another. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so there's no, it, it's never going to look good. You yeah. know, we want to say, well, how do you do it well? But it's never going to look good. I hope it doesn't look good. You know, I, mean, I don't like, even do it well. Like I don't know that we as a people do it well because a lot of times when I hear people talk about lament, there's this sabbatical. You know, there's this mm. vacation. There's this time to just go away and shut the door and just take the time. Man, we lamenting with four kids and COVID and jobs <laughs> and work to do. And it feels like we've always had, mm. that, it's like, you know, and that's a lot of the PTSD and the trauma of, of our community is that like, we don't get to stop. And you almost don't get to, you almost gotta build up a tolerance for it. Like, oh, another one that, yeah. It rained yesterday too, again, like again, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but you you just kind of keep going. And so, yeah, I guess to do it well, I think is to like, I I think this lament, this listen, lament and leverage is an ongoing cycle. I think it is the, the way of life for us and should be. And like you're listening even as you're lamenting because yeah. some 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 folks some white folks are calling their black friends or black associates or black you know people that they have met once and expressing all this you know concern and some some black people are saying like that's not helpful to me because we've never had that conversation and I don't want to have it now with you in this moment um so they need that space you know what I'm so so like even in your lamenting and in your efforts but the even the risk of being shut down like that or rejected like that like go ahead and take that risk like that's yeah. an act of love in this yeah. and so that i'd say and i've i've been approached by a bunch of white people who've asked like i want to do this you know you think it's a good idea i got neighbors i, I know someone um, i want i want to post this like i would honestly say that the gestures do mean a lot. Just be open when someone tells you how they receive that. You know what I'm saying? They say it's the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. And I always say, yeah, like maybe the first time, but after I tell you I don't like roses, Mm -hmm. it ain't the thought that counts no more. It's it's like, bring me something I like. Like I already told you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, here's roses again, it's the thought that counts. No, you didn't think then, because I told you I don't like roses. In that same way, like go with with your best like intention and then be open to how this person tells you, like they receive love or they receive care at this moment, right. or hey, I already got my people that I'm processing this with and I'm doing all right, um, but thank you, you know, so just respect. But that's, li- yeah, and I think that's listening, though, yep. right? Like yeah. I'm listening. And so even part of that is listening is educating yourself. Yep. And, and I know for me as a white man that's a pastor and speaking into things and speaking on behalf, um, there's been so much grace mm. shown me when I make ignorant, ignorant comments or whatever that thing is. But I think that's the, that's the kingdom piece and the mm. relationality piece. Yeah. It's also, I mean, everybody wants to respond right now, mm-hmm. yeah. right? But there'll be a break 
and then sadly that break probably won't be very long. Mm -hmm. But the question I think becomes in that break time when mm -hmm. it's when the trauma has died not died down but is the the outrage has simmered mm -hmm. um am i still listening mm -hmm. am i still learning mm -hmm. yep. am i yeah. right and and you know, that you know you have it. been if you if you have moved into leveraging mm -hmm. and you move into that place where you begin to 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 make steps and to do things and to walk with me and to walk with him mm -hmm. and to 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 be you know like like the good samaritan as opposed to the the levite and the priest who crossed the street mm -hmm. and you know it's it's like you have the, the robbers who overtook him and you have the priest and the levite one didn't love him at all the other didn't love him enough Leveraging means you're the good Samaritan who says, I need to step into this because to not love or to not love enough produces the same result. That guy's going to die if he's left. Mm -hmm. And so you step in and what you have and what you have available becomes mine. Mm -hmm. We begin to have all things in common. You know, it's like your strength becomes my strength. My weakness becomes your weakness. Right. And, and we begin to have those things in common. And that's what leverage looks like. And I'm struck by how, how you don't how how that order is important, right? Yeah. Listen, lament, leverage, because you don't start with leverage. Right. I think that's when you're handing that's the out instinct. the wrong. Like, yeah. here's your roses, and I know you're allergic, kind of a thing. <laughs> like, um, it, and so that may mean that it takes a year mm -hmm. for some of us, two years for some of us to to get to enough hearing where we're actually in lament yeah. and and where we can actually leverage. And then yeah. it's the sense of saying, because, I, I don't know, this is how I think about it, because it's no longer you and me, but there's a we, yep. then now what's mine is yours in that yeah. sense, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And and hopefully mm -hmm. um, we begin to raise some of these voices yeah you know but that's what kingdom looks like you know that that that's what it has always looked like but there's all this other stuff that got piled on top of it all the politics and all the economics and all the 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 humanity just kind of like mm -hmm. piled on it mm -hmm. and and i just if if we can become the church that says lord let your kingdom come mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of people saying, Lord, come soon. No, not too soon, because a lot of us would be, you know, out of luck if he came too soon. <laughs> but 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 we 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 got this. We got the Holy Spirit. We we've got this. Mm -hmm. You know, we, mm -hmm. we've got this. I think of um, our community now is this. Listen to this. And we we want to take communion together. And I know. We want to do that as a community in your homes. But I also, I think it's important that we hear we are, we are in this uh, for the rest of our history to walk together, to learn to listen better, to learn to lament better mm -hmm. so that we can continue to leverage for each other. Yeah. And, and so wherever we're at in this spectrum, I think... Mike, you said it, that the call for us is to move towards the king. Yeah. Um, I was struck by that Ephesians passage where Paul says that Christ has tore down the dividing wall of hostility mm -hmm. and brought peace to make one new person, yeah. one new humanity. And um, like that's that is a core thing that we're trying to figure out how to live out together. Yeah. Yeah. So I think as we as we transition to to the rest of the service, to praise and worship and to communion, I think it's important for us to understand and remember that we have a savior and we have a we have a we have a Christ, we have a king who doesn't just know how we feel. Mm -hmm. He has felt and he continues to feel what we feel. Yeah. And as we listen to one another, let us hear with his ears. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we lament and we cry, we remember that he 
lamented and he cried and he continues to do that, you know, and that he leveraged everything on our behalf. And so um, as we remember him today, we remember that his body was broken and take that and eat that guys. <laughs> remember that. And his blood was shed for us. And so let's end with a prayer. Hmm. Father, thank you for the you of you, for all the pain that you endured so that we can stand and be your children and be in your kingdom. Father, let your kingdom come here to this church, to our people, to this city, to this nation, to this world. Let it come to this earth the way it already is in heaven. And we thank you, Father, for just the, the ability to be able to love and to care for one another through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Not a second. For another minute, not an hour of another day, but at this moment when my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before through a window. Or an open door I stretch my hands to thee Come rescue me I need you right away I need you now I need you now I need second or another minute, not an hour of another day, but Lord, I need you right away, and if I never needed you before, to show up and restore all of the faith that I let slip while I was yet searching the world for more. The truest friend I have in need, you're my best friend, I know indeed, I stretch my hands. Come rescue me, I need you right away. The agony of feeling alone, the fear of doing things on my own, this test and trial I know it comes to make me strong. And this wave of trial that beats upon me But to know, Lord, that in you But to know, Lord, that in you But to know, Lord, that in you I've got victory I need you now Lord, I need you
second or another minute not an hour of another day but Lord I need you Lord I need you oh God I need you And I need the old, I need the every hour, I need the oh, bless me now. I say, Savior, for I come to, to Thee. I need.